Hi, welcome to this video, and I'm going to be showing how to solve the Gaussian integral. Now, there is a lot of ways to solve the Gaussian integral. However, we want to solve this form of the Gaussian integral, which is x to the n instead of just e to the negative ax. There's a very clever solution for just e to the a x squared, but I will be going for a more general solution. The way that we're going to be accomplishing this is through the gamma function. The gamma function is a very well-known function, very useful in physics, and it's very easy to work with. So the reason that we're going to use it is because if you notice, these have a little bit of similarity, right? A little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to transform the gamma function such that we can figure out, we can make it so that it looks like this and then easily figure out what the gamma function, uh, what this would be in the terms of the gamma function. Now, the gamma function is also very, very well known because it is related directly to the factorial. So if you take the gamma function of a number p, that's going to be the same as if, uh, of a natural number p, that's going to be the same as if you take the factorial of that number p minus 1. So let's begin. What we're going to do is we're going to have to transform the original gamma function to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the gamma function in terms of a dummy variable. So instead of x, we're going to do y. So we're going to do 0 to infinity of y to the p minus 1, e to negative y, dy. Let me write the gamma function here. All right. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to have to do a substitution. Because the, the most difficult substitution is going to be this one. We're just going to say that y is equal to ax squared. So let's do that. ax squared. Now we have to find the derivative because we have a dy term, and that's going to be equal to ax dx. Now if we go back and we plug these in the here, we're going to get 0 to infinity of ax squared e to negative ax squared, and then 2ax dx. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take out all the constants, right? Oh, my bad. This is p minus 1. I almost forgot that. If any of you were watching this and you caught that, good on you. Very intelligent people. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take out this uh, constants. So a, 2, and a. And this is going to be equal to 2 a to the p integral 0 to infinity of x to the 2p minus 1 e to the negative ax squared dx, right? Uh, if you didn't know what just went on, don't worry about it. Work it out yourself. You're all very intelligent people. I'm sure you'll be able to get it. Now, there's something noteworthy here. If 2p minus 1 is an odd number, we cannot proceed. However, one of the conditions is that we're looking for even n, because if n is odd, this entire function is odd, which means that this integral evaluates to zero. So we do not need to look for even n, or for odd n. We have to just find even n. Another property that's very interesting about even functions is that the integral from zero to infinity of f of x dx is equal to one half from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx. And this is very easy to see why it's true, because, because it mirrors itself uh, on both sides. That just means that if you have, you're basically just doubling it by uh, adding from zero to, to negative infinity because uh, of the properties of an even function, right? So what we're going to do over here is we see that we have a 2, and we have a 0 to infinity. So we can just take out the middleman. Doing it closer to the original the Gaussian integral. Then we're going to do x to the 2p minus 1 e to the negative ax squared dx. Now, because we had x to the n over here, that means that our n is equal to 2p minus 1. However, because n has to be even, that means that this p is not an integer. It's a half integer. It has to be. 
Why? Because we need two times whatever this p is to be an odd number, so that when we remove one, we get an even number. So p is gonna be an odd number over two. So if we were to rearrange this, that means that p is equal to n plus one over two, and n has to be even. So clearly, this has to be an odd, uh, a half integer. Now, as a result, when we go into here, let's uh, let's move forward a little bit, right? We're going to want to find of p. We have the gamma function of p, and that's equal to the a to the p. Uh, uh, integral of x to the 2p minus 1. Okay, so now we're just going to do n, right? a to the p, negative integral, negative uh, infinity to infinity, x to the n, e to the negative ax squared, dx is equal to of p, the gamma function of p, right? However, because we already said that p has to be n plus 1 over 2, that means that we can go for a little bit further here. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the recurrence relation. So there's a recurrence relation for gamma. Gamma of p is equal to p minus 1 gamma p minus 1. I apologize for how ugly this gamma looks. Um, there we go. Hopefully it looks a little better. So that's pretty easy to see. So if we have like say three gamma of three, it's gonna be the same as two gamma of two. Wow, this is terrible gammas that I'm drawing. Which is then equal to two times one times gamma of one, which is just two times one, right? So if we do, let's say five, right? We're gonna end up getting five times uh, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? Which is just 4 factorial. Now, what if we do it with this recurrence relation with this type of number, which is a half integer, right? That means that we have, let's say, 5 halves, right? This will fit for this because 5 is the same as 4 plus 1 divided by 2. So 5, two, five halves is the same as uh, 4 plus 1 divided by 2, and is even. This checks out. And this is going to be equal to 3 over 2, gamma of 1 half. Right? One of the identities, which I'm not going to prove here, gamma of 1 half, square root of pi. So we're going to end up getting 3 over 2 times the square root of pi. If we keep doing these recurrence relations, it can be really, really easy to start to see a pattern. And that is that if we go back to our integral, our Gaussian integral, from negative infinity to infinity, we're gonna get x to the n, e to the negative ax squared dx is equal to gamma n plus one over two over a n plus 1 over 2, right? And because of the recurrence relation that we set up here, every single one of these is going to have to be divided by 2. So what we're going to end up getting is, uh, on the bottom, we're going to have a 2 to the power of n minus 2. On the top, there has to be a pi, a square root of pi. And on the top, we're going to go down from 5 to 3 to 1. If we had a 7, it would be from 7 to 5 to 3 to 1. That's what we call a double factorial. It's a factorial that just goes down by 2 instead of going by, down by 1. So this will actually just be square root of pi, n minus 1, double factorial, divided by 2 to the n over 2 times a to the n plus 1 over 2. So that means that our Gaussian integral is very easy to compute. It might not look it, but 
the Gaussian integrals that we're going to deal with are very low powers. It's going to be usually just 0, 1, and 2. So now let's try, let's try solving for n equals 0. So if we put n equals 0, we're going to get square root of pi, right? 0 minus 1, double factorial, divided by 2 to the 0 over 2 times a times 0 plus 1 over 2. So what we're going to get is, well, this becomes 1. This also becomes 1. So we're going to get square root of pi over square root of a. Now, if we do the case for n equals 2, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Pi 2 minus 1 double factorial divided by 2 to 2 over 2 times a to 2 plus 1 over 2. So what we're going to get is square root of pi over uh, 2a square root of a. So it's a very simple proof, um, I think, uh, relating the gamma function to the Gaussian integral. But the important part of this is that it gives such a simple relation. With this relation, it's very, very easy to compute any power of n. And again, I must note, only works uh, for n even. Because remember, if n is odd, that integral, this integral will be zero for every odd n. So there you have it. Hopefully this relation helps you. Um, let me know what other types of uh, proofs you might want in quantum mechanics. Uh, this is a fairly useful relation that I found to make it very easy to always be able to solve Gaussian integrals in my head, even during the exams. Uh, so, yeah, just let me know whatever you guys would want. Uh, again, I apologize for the format, but I will be trying to put videos that are relevant to quantum mechanics as much as I can. I do have an exam this week, so I'm not going to really be able to do a lot of work this week. However, I will try my best to do it in the future. Hopefully you have you enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's any additional clarity that I could have made. Uh, in the future, I might remake this video depending on what uh, feedback that I get. But uh, hopefully you guys have a nice day and hopefully you guys learned this, anything today.